Howdy everybody, welcome back to video number 8 of the aft fuselage. So in this video you'll see a couple of different things. First of all I finish up the last few rivets in the very aft section of the aft fuselage. Um, it's not a very good camera angle but then again there's not a whole lot of room. There is enough room for my arm and that is about it in that area. Um, but I do use my new little bucking bar, the BB-12 bucking bar that I got from Midwest Tungsten. Um, and it was awesome. And so I did that on both sides there. And finished up the last rivets of the bottom part of the fuselage there. And then checked them with my little mirror to make sure I could make sure they were right and I could look at the, the back side of those rivets. And then once I finished that particular section, I moved on to the air, the static air system. So the static air system is a whole bunch of hoses. So it's that little one eighth inch hose. That's the, the first one. That's the part that kind of hooks to two little rivets that you put in the skin. And so you put the rivets in and then you drill out the center of the rivets. Um, and then you use some, um, <clears throat> some sealant some silicone sealant stuff um, on the, you put a little bit on the end of the rivet not in the hole because you don't want it blocked up because it's a static air system you want air to get through it but on the outside you put a little bit of silicone and then you you shove that hose on the end of that rivet and that becomes your static air system your static air hose system there um, and they do come with a a little uh, it's like a little black T that you can attach um, the this air the static air hose that goes from the rivets to the other side and then to the bigger hose that ends up going to the actual static air system up in the cockpit. But those little things are very very breakable. And don't ask me why I know, but I do know that they break pretty easily if you are not careful. So when you're putting the them into the hose itself, make sure you're careful and you don't break it. And you will see me here real quick be pretty upset. And it, it's like half a second. And I'll, I'll point it out here real quick. Ready? You see me trying to mess with it, trying to mess with it. Oh, there I'm putting the zip ties because you kind of zip tie it up to the front there. While I'm doing that, I'll tell you a joke. So, what did the dolphin say to the other dolphin that asked if he could sleep with his wife? So, what did the dolphin say to the other dolphin when he asked if he could sleep with his wife? Uh -uh. <laughs> ah, so funny. Uh, I break, crack myself up sometimes. Um, but here I'm finishing up the static air system um, and you'll see me be very mad because I just broke that dumb part and I had to order another another one I did order one it came and I replaced it um, here is the all of the hoses and the antennas and pretty much anything that goes on the inside before you close up the top of the aft fuselage so I'm putting in, I believe it's the ELT and the radio antenna cables. Um, you'll see those go in here shortly. Um, you'll see me with the rudder cables. Those go through some grommets as well. And then um, what else do I put in there? Not sure. You'll see a few different things. Um, but basically what you do is you use the, the little plastic grommets. They fit inside the little holes in the bulkheads. Um, to protect the cable so they don't get, you know, sliced up or anything. Um, and then you just run the wires through the holes is basically all you do. And then you use zip ties to put them into place. I um, mean, it tells you where to place them. Like it'll say, put this, you know, 11 inches from this point. And so you just run it out 11 inches and then you can know where you need to strap it down. And there's a rudder cable I just did. Rolled it up to kind of get it out of the way so it was out of my way. And that's um, pretty much 
I mean, it, it's kind of simple. You just run the, the cables and the wires and the hoses where it tells you to run them. It's not difficult. But just so you know, this video was done about, I'm guessing, three months ago. It was before Vans came out with all of their problems because um, I had ordered stuff and had it sent to me relatively quickly. Um, so it was before all of the, the things kind of broke loose. But I finish up with the hoses right here. Okay, so the cable guides for the rudder cables and they have pop rivets. I don't know if you can see those pop rivets. And I don't know if you could see that some of those pop rivets pulled all the way through. So I don't know, can you see the hole in there? Um, yeah. Um, so followed the instructions, looked up a bunch of stuff, and I have no clue. And no clue. Um, what I did figure out is you can pull them and they kind of pull through the washers that they tell you to use. Um, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. So I did, you can see me using my hand um, rivet puller there. I did buy a pneumatic one and it worked a little bit better, um, but it still it pulled the post out of those pull rivets um, a little bit too far when they broke off. There was a little bit still sticking out so it wasn't smooth. So I did take my, my Dremel tool and I smoothed off that post so it wasn't sticking out past. You can see me with my Dremel right there. Um, I smoothed it out so it was not sticking up outside of the actual rivet itself. Um, and I don't know if there is like why that happens but it happened on almost all of them um, they pulled it's like the post wouldn't break off when the end of it hit that the washer that's on the other side of the plastic it pulled through the washer and then um, would break off either after it got through there or I would pull it all the way through and it would leave an empty hole so um, the pneumatic river, riveter helped. It didn't pull it all the way through and then I just used the, the Dremel to kind of clean it up a little bit and get that post so it wasn't sticking out um, further than the actual top of the rivet. Um, and then um, the top of that where the aft deck kind of sits, there are a couple of things you're going to do. The there's some nut plates that go in there and then the nut plates for the the aft access panels those nut plates get countersunk when they're the top two ones get countersunk because the the j channel or not the j channel the uh the longeron fit is fit fits right there and so the the they're not dimpled they're um they're actually countersunk and then you dimple all of the other ones um, because I chose to do the the optional um, flush mounted system um, those had to be countersunk and then dimpled and so that's me setting the countersink so it sets properly in there so I can then do that to where the the longeron is and then you'll see me put this You'll see me countersink those top two parts of that aft access panel. Um, the rest of them have already been dimpled, but those top two needed countersunk. So I did that on both sides so they fit. So I decided to do the optional um, panel, what is it, access panel dimpling. So the uh, side panel here that goes in the back. The optional one has you flush mount that guy like that instead of doing um, screws that stand out. Um, honestly, I don't know if I would recommend it. And there you have it. Feel free to subscribe and like this video. And we'll talk to you later. See ya.